Hello everybody, I hope you all had a really good week. Before I start work on this video, I just want to say thanks for all the nice comments that everybody's been leaving underneath the videos. I'd really like to have more time to respond to you all, but I'm trying to put what time I have because this is just a part-time hobby for me. So I'm trying to put all the time I have into making the videos, but I'll see if I can get some spare time to respond to more of the comments in the future. This is my board for this week. So as you can see, we have a faulty Toshiba Portage X20WE 13J. Okay, that's a bit of a mouthful. And this is as much as I know about it. It's just described as faulty. I asked the seller, he said it's not powering on. And this is what it looks like right here. As you can see, it has one USB-C input. So what I'm gonna do is plug it in, and we're going to start measuring some voltages on it and see if we can work out what's wrong with this. Just to address one thing from the comments last week, guys, a number of people were asking me when replacing the PD controller from last week's laptop, does it require programming after you replace it? And my genuine answer is, I don't know. I didn't know that was a thing. I know that, you know, you have your EC bias, you have your regular bias, and you have your super IO, and they may all require programming. But I didn't realize that PD controllers actually may require programming also so I will need to check that out myself before uh, going ahead with replacing that PD controller. Okay so let's start working this week's laptop. So the first thing I did was to plug it in and I immediately noticed that this IC, this IC and this IC all seem to be getting quite hot to the touch. But what I decided to do was just start taking measurements on the input anyway and hopefully that would flush out you know whether one or all of them are faulty it's probably likely that there's just one that's faulty and it's just dragging a high amount of current through the other ICs but we're going to start at the USB-C port and I'm going to take a measurement there now I don't have a schematic for this week's laptop but as you can see we have two capacitors right here on the input so I'm going to assume that one side of those is where our USB positive voltage is coming in so with my multimeter in volts DC in a 20 volt range, I'm going to place my black probe to ground and I'm going to place my red probe to the near side of this capacitor and when I press it there, I find that it measures 20.10 volts. So it looks like our PD controller is successfully negotiating with my USB-C adapter and it's given me the correct voltage of approximately 20 volts. Okay, so it looks like we've got the correct input voltage, so where do we go next? Well, if we move up the circuit board, you can see that there is an IC here called a TPS65982. I think we had one of these a couple of weeks ago. Now, this is a PD controller. So what I'm going to do is check around the voltages on this and see if they look like they're okay and that this PD controller is working. I've zoomed right in on this PD controller so that we can see when I superimpose the pinouts on it. This is actually the pinouts that I got from the data sheet and I've literally just resized it down on top of the IC. I need to improve on this graphic, but I'll do that in the next few weeks. But as you can see, even though it is a ball grid array, we can roughly see where all of the pins go. Like the three VBUS pins here, and you can see that one track is connected to the three of these. Similarly up here, we have this PP underscore 5V0 that's connected to this one track here. We can also identify our 1.8 volts LDO, which connects out and we can measure it at this capacitor. Our 3.3 volts LDO should be able to measure that at this capacitor. There's a V in 3 plus 3V3 that we should be able to measure on this capacitor. And lastly, there's an LDO 1.8 volts that we should be able to measure on this capacitor here. Now, given that we have 20 volts on the input, I think the PD controller is working, but I'm just going to check those LDOs just to confirm that they're all okay. So with my multimeter in volts DC in the 20 volt range, I took down all of the voltages at those different pins. And here's what I found. So at PP underscore 5E0, I've got 20.10 volts. At VBUS, I've got 20.10 volts. Up at the top here, connecting to my LDO 1V8, I've got 1.79 or roughly 1.8 volts so that's good at my ldo underscore 3v3 i measured 3.33 volts at this capacitor so that's also good at my v in 3v3 i measured only 1.72 volts so i don't know if that's indicative of where the problem might be i presume that's meant to be a 3.3 volts input to tell me that you know other parts of the circuit are okay but that's not measuring what i think it should measure
The last one down at the bottom is my LDO underscore 1V8A and that is measuring 1.79 volts or roughly 1.8 so that's good also. Just before we leave this part of the circuit I'm interested in learning more about the PD controller so if any of you guys know of like a quick and simple video that fully explains what the PD controller does and how it works and um, that might give me a bit more information please put down in the comments below. So after the PD controller I have traced my 20.10 volts across to the other side of the board to this track right here and that brings us on to a MOSFET right, this one right here I'll mark the pinouts on that from there it comes on to a second MOSFET and from that MOSFET it then goes through a current sense resistor and that is the main power rail coming in from our USB so this is also 20.10 volts so what I'm looking for now is the battery management IC because this is a narrow voltage DC system in use on this so our 20 volts should be regulated down to what they call a V sys voltage and that should go to all the secondary circuits so let's see if we can find the battery management IC and start taking some measurements around that I flip back to the other side of the board and located our battery management IC. Okay, anybody want to guess? Just pause the video. Okay, that's an easy one. The battery management IC is obviously this one right here. So let's zoom in on it. And I'm going to mark out the pinouts the way I normally do. And hopefully that will make it a bit clearer for us to work along. This is our ISL9237HRZ, which is a battery management IC. Now, if you're looking at one of these for the first time, you're probably looking at these 32 pins and thinking, God, I have to take all of the measurements of these and compare it to another one where I have all of the good values. But that's not really what we need to do here. Let me just show you a quick look at the schematic. On the data sheet for this, they give you a very helpful, very simple, typical application circuit. So what we have is our adapter voltage coming in. We can put an optional set of MOSFETs here and the main thing is here we've got a current sense resistor on the input and two pins of our IC are connected to that so what we can very simply do is measure our input we should be getting that same 20.10 volts on our input here so I can measure at that CSI in pin to confirm whether that is the case or not then on the other side we have a V sys voltage that's generated and that goes out to all of our secondary circuits so we need to measure that to confirm that this IC is working and we do have a V sys pin where we can measure that so it's two things I'm going to do measure the voltage on the input at the CSI in pin and measure the voltage on the output at the V sys pin so let's do that now so we introduce our multimeter and volts DC in the 20 volt range once again. I place my black probe to ground and I place my red probe to the CSI in pin, which is actually this one here. So we've got CSI in, and I'm going to place it to this side of the capacitor. And when I measure there, I find that we measure 20.10 volts. So we've got the correct input to our battery management IC. My production team informs me that it's actually CS in, not CSI in, and that I may have been watching too much American TV. The next pin that we want to measure is our VSYS pin down here. So once again, with my black probe on the ground side of that capacitor, I place my red probe to the VSYS pin. And when I measure there, I find that we have 12.60 volts. So that looks okay to me. We're getting the correct input of 20.10 volts and our VSYS rail is a very stable 12.60 volts that's been sent down to all of our secondary circuits. One other thing I'm going to start including on my videos is all of the measurements I took around the IC. So here are all the measurements that I took around this IC while I was working on it. So having established that our VSYS power rail is good, where do we go next? Well, where we go next is to find our 3.3 .3 volts always on and our 5 volts always on power. Now, on these laptops, there's usually one IC that generates these. I know from working on previous laptops that it's actually this IC. If you weren't sure, what you could do is just take down the markings on all of the ICs and Google search them for a data sheet and you should be able to find out which one produces the 3.3 .3 volts always on power. 
I've zoomed in on this IC and I've marked in all the pinouts just so we can view it all together. So what should I be seeing here? Well, first of all, we should be getting an input on the V in pin, that's pin 12. So there's this little zero ohm resistor right here, which is a good place that we can measure. So we should be getting our 12.60 volts coming in. And if this IC gets an input voltage, we should have 3.3 volts always on power on our VREG3, which I can measure at this capacitor right here. And we should have 5 volts always on on our VREG5, which I can measure here. So let's take some measurements once again. With my multimeter in volts DC in a 20 volt range, I place my black probe to the ground side of one of these capacitors here, and I place my red probe to that zero ohm resistor on the input. And I find that measures 12.60 volts. So we're getting the correct input. Next, we want to measure our VREG tree. So as long as we have an input on V in, this should be generating 3.3 volts. So the easiest place to measure this is across this track and on this capacitor right here. And when I measure there, I find it measures 1.72 volts. Okay, so it looks like we have a problem with our VREG3. Either the IC isn't producing the correct voltage or there's a problem on that voltage rail that's pulling it down to 1.72 volts. What I'm gonna do is take a measurement on the VREG5, which is our always on 5 volts power, and see if that is correct. If the 5 volts is online and there's no issue with that, it may be just that we have a fault with the VREG3. But let's take a measure on that pin 13 VREG5. And measuring at VREG5, I find that it's measuring 0 0.5 volts, not 5 volts, 0 0.5 volts. So it looks like either this IC or something it's connected to has a problem. Okay, so what do we do next? Well, we need to know if this IC itself has a problem or if there's possibly a short on our VREG3 power rail or a short on our VREG5 power rail. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna introduce my multimeter in diode mode. We're gonna disconnect all power from the board. I'm gonna place my red probe to ground. I'm just getting a ground here from one side of the capacitor. And with my black probe, I'm gonna measure on that VREG3. And again, the easiest place to measure is at this capacitor right here. And when I measure there, I find it's 0 0.006 volts. So it looks like we have a short on our VREG3 power rail. So we have a short on our VREG3 power rail. Do we have a short on our VREG5? Well, let's check. So with the same setup, multimeter in diode mode, red probe to ground, I place my black probe to where our VREG5 comes out. Easiest place to measure is at this capacitor here. And I find that it measures 0 0.510 volts. So the five volts always on power rail is actually good. Okay, well, what do we do when we have a shorted power rail? Well, as I'm sure you all know at this stage, we inject voltage and see what heats up. So where I need to inject is at this point here. And I'm gonna use the same ground. So I'm gonna use the ground from this capacitor here. So let me just show you how I set that up. So I introduce my power supply. I connect my black wire to ground, my red wire to the capacitor where we're detecting a short, and I set my voltage to three volts only. We don't go higher than that because all of the components on that 3.3 volts power rail are only spec to work with 3.3 volts. When I connected that and powered it on, it immediately started drawing 0 0.38 or 380 milliamps. So I decided to take out my thermal camera, have a look around and see if I could identify which component was drawing that 380 milliamps. And this is what that looks like on my actual motherboard. As you can see I've got my red wire connected in to the capacitor here and it was actually easier for me to connect the ground to the screw hole on the side here. But as you can see, I have that connected up and when I injected my power, it, you can see there it's 0.37 or 0.38. I decided to get my thermal camera and from my thermal camera you can see that there is one distinct spot on the board that is heating up. And when I look closer at that, that is the PD controller. Next, I decided to just take off that TPS IC and check again to see if we had a short on our VREG3 power rail. 
So with that PD controller I see now removed, we want to check again on our VREG3 power rail and see if we still have a short. So I introduce my multimeter in diode mode once again. I place my red probe to ground and my black probe to that capacitor on the VREG3 power rail. And this time I measure 0 0.446 volts. So it seems like it was shorted back through that PD controller. So once again, it looks like the PD controller is what needs to be replaced. And once again, I don't have one of these to replace it. And I don't know if it needs programming as well. Maybe somebody knows for this particular one if this needs to be programmed. Um, I'm sure it's frustrating for you guys. It's frustrating for me that I don't get to finish off the video by replacing the component and then showing you on screen, you know, the laptop booting up again. That would be nice. And that's where I hope to get to with these videos. And that's where I'm going to leave this video for this week. We really need to do a serious video on these PD controllers, how they work and how to replace them. So I'm going to be working on that in the background and I'm going to buy in a few um, and see if I can work on the last few laptops where we've had a PD controller failure. But that's all I got for this week, guys. Please like and subscribe. And if you've got anything to say to me, put it in the comments below. Thanks.